Hey guys, it's me P Guy here, and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to create this plumbing fixture schedule. Now I've already gone ahead and created it, and I just want to show you guys um, how it works a little bit. So these are all my fixtures, and I actually created these custom fixtures uh, in a video I did last week, so make sure you check that out. But let's just say this is a tag right here by the way, so I'm going to go ahead and just edit this tag, which is also linked to this fixture right here. So now under L1 you're going to see that my schedule updates, so I'm just going to make this MEP guy we're gonna hit enter and it's gonna ask if I want to change it and I'm gonna say yes and that's actually going to update on my schedule as well as my fixture so now this fixture right here is actually called MEP guy and you can see that when we scroll down the type mark has been changed to MEP guy so I'm going to show you how all that works uh, in this video and how to create this really cool uh, updatable and smart schedule so I'm just gonna go ahead and undo a couple of those steps and we're going to go ahead and just delete this schedule. So we'll click delete over here on schedule quantities. I'm gonna delete these little notes I have. So I've went ahead and uh, created all these different types of fixtures and these fixtures and this custom fixture along with the schedule will also be available at mepguy.com. So let's go ahead and start our schedule creation. So all we're gonna do is go up to view, schedules, schedule quantities, and we're going to select plumbing fixture, so just scroll down to the bottom, go to plumbing fixture, and hit OK. Now it's going to ask us um, what we want to, you know, the fields we want to use for our plumbing fixture schedule. So I'm going to start with the uh, type mark, and then after that, we probably want our manufacturer. So let's look for manufacturer in here, and maybe the model number of the fixture. And I also want to add some uh, comments. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to comments. So let's start with that. And we're going to hit OK. So as you can see, the schedule does populate right here. I'm just going to move it to the side so you guys can see the fixtures as well as the schedule. So we'll zoom in to the fixtures right here. And as you can see, the type mark is the only thing that's been filled out. So we can start to go ahead and update our schedule as we go. So you'll notice there is a bunch of L1s here, and that's OK. So I'm going to go ahead and um, change this and we'll just name this uh, I'm gonna do all cap company a and it's gonna ask me do I want to update all the L1s so I'm gonna say yes because I definitely want to do that and as you can see it updates all of the L1s on this schedule and that's because they are a type so since L1 is a type of fixture I definitely want the manufacturer to be the same for each L1. Now there's multiple L1s in this project because all of these are actually an L1. So I'm going to show you guys actually a little tip here. I'm going to select all of these fixtures right here. And if I go up to annotate and I go tag all, there's this only selected objects in current view. So only the things that I've selected are going to get tagged. They're all going to get tagged. So I'm going to use this plumbing fixtures tag and hit OK. And you can see Revit has actually automatically tagged all of those. Now, if I want to move those, I can select all of these right here and I can filter them. And maybe I only want to select the plumbing fixture tags. And then I can just use my arrow keys and nudge these down like this. I'm going to nudge these down as well. So I just wanted to show that little tip to you guys. So let's continue on here. We can also add the model number. So maybe it's a, B, C, D, dash, one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna hit OK. And so that also automatically um, made the model the same because these are all the same types. Let's just continue and let's add some comments. So I'm just gonna say um, provide TMV-1. And that time you can see that the only thing that updated was this fixture right here, which if I select it in my schedule, it actually highlights in the model. So if I select the next one, you can see the next one gets highlighted. So only this one updated with the comments. And that's not really something I want. So as with Revit, we can always um, change things a little bit. So maybe it's not the comments I want. So let's investigate that a little bit. So now that I have this fixture selected, you can see over here there are some comments associated with that fixture. And the comments are provide TMV-1, and that's what we see right here. But for the rest of them, they don't have any comments right here. So if I select another one of these L-1s, there's no comments. So those, these right here, which is identity data, is actually instance-based. So each instance of this fixture has its own little comments uh, parameter. So if I go to edit type, though, that's where we get into the type parameters of these fixtures. So all the L1s 
um, associated have these this data and you can see that right here on our schedule so for instance the model is ABC and that's right here and you can see company A is also filled out so if I selected this one it would have all this data because it's a type and as you can see all the different types are in my schedule as well so let's uh, keep going through here and if we look at this a little closer we can see that there's also a field called type comments and if I edit that it will edit the comments for all of my fixtures so let's add that to our schedule so I'm just gonna click OK and let's go to fixture schedule we'll just click into it and all we have to do is click this edit fields button and now we can just get rid of our comments and I'm just gonna update them with type comments and we're just gonna add that in we're gonna hit OK and we're just gonna stretch that out and now if I edit one of these comments it should edit or add them to all the different uh, L-1 so I'm gonna say provide TMV-1 which is a tempering or temperature mixing valve or thermostatic mixing valve and you can see all the um, comments for this uh, L-1 fixture got added so type comments are which what we want to use so I also can add this information in my schedule but I also can add it on the fixture as um, in the model so if I click on SK-1 and I go to edit type these are all the type properties associated with this so if I want to just ed edit the fixture um, from here I can just click on model and I can do um, AAAA-1234 and it should update on my schedule as well so if I hit apply you can see that it gets updated here and same with manufacturer I can also um, make that ABC hit apply and it updates on my schedule as well so I can go ahead and fill this thing out one thing I'm noticing is I don't have anything that distinguishes what my type mark is so I have SK-1 and maybe I want to tell um, you know anybody who's reviewing this that this is going to be a sink and L1 is that and is going to be a lavatory so let's add another field maybe let's pick a uh, description so I'm gonna hit cancel here and we're gonna click back into our schedule and I'm just gonna go back to fields and let's go ahead and add another field and this time we're going to add description I'm just gonna add it in and it's at the bottom here which would put it right there but I actually want the description to be right after type mark so I'm gonna go ahead and move this up so I'm just gonna click it click it click it one more time and now it's right below type mark and that should look good so the description was already filled out but I can go ahead and fill that out so for SK1 I can do it right from the schedule so we're just gonna call that a sync I'm gonna hit OK so Revit's just asking you to make sure that you want to edit these for all the types of SK-1 in your model so we're gonna hit OK so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this uh, filling this out for you guys so again so if we have SK-1 and maybe SK-2 is also a sync you can see there's also a drop-down box so I'm gonna click that and anything that's been entered in for the values here I can use to pick from this list so I can just quickly pick sync and hit OK and that will update same with lavatory I can just quickly hit the drop down and it will update to lavatory now for mop sync maybe I have to click into the field and we're just gonna do mop sync hit OK and we can also use copy and paste in these so if I hit control C I can paste in mop sync but maybe I want to change that so I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna change this to kitchen so that's how you start to edit things inside Revit so I just finished filling out this schedule and I did want to show you guys one thing just a little tip so if you select one of the fixtures and you go to edit type there's all this stuff that you can add and one thing that you can always add uh, to your fixtures if you have like cut sheets and they're available online you can put the URL here so that way that anybody can access it a lot of companies do provide like a PDF on their website um, but you can also just put like some really awesome site in here like mepguy.com so I just wanted to show you guys that real quick so we have our schedule but we also have all of these L1's repeating so let's clean that up a little bit so let's click into our schedule and let's go over to um, sorting and grouping and I want to sort this um, basically by this type mark so let's just do type mark here and we'll make it ascending that's fine um, and I so let's click OK here so that changes it alphabetically so K went first but at least my L1 and my L2 are now sorting 
incorrectly, so SK1 and SK2. So the next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of these, um, you know, duplicated instances. So let's go ahead and go back to sorting and grouping. And down here, you're going to see itemize every instance. And what that will do is if we uncheck it, it will group all these L1s together. Since they have all the same data here, they will just get grouped into one row. So let's just click OK. And now we have a schedule that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and throw this thing on a sheet. So I'm going to go up to view and we're just going to go to a new sheet. And this one looks fine. We got our new sheet right here. And the way to throw a schedule on a sheet is all I have to do is grab it from my project browser and just drag it in. And let's just put it about right here. Hit escape and let's just zoom in. And all we have to do is kind of size this thing. So let's click on it and we can just use these grips to kind of size it and get it to, you know, looking at least okay for now. And we can always make these changes uh, later. So let's go ahead and zoom out and then we'll just drag this guy back. And we can also use our arrow keys to kind of get them in the right space. So I'm pretty happy with this, so let's zoom in. And let's go ahead and show you guys some of the formatting stuff that you guys can do. So I went ahead and moved the plumbing fixture schedule over here because I want to show you the updates that happen. So I'm going to click into that plumbing fixture schedule. And let's start with the appearance right here. So let's click edit and let's see what things we can change. Now there are different things you can do here. Um, I can get rid of this title if I want, so I can click that and click OK, and it will remove my title. I could also remove these um, headers if I wanted to, but I doubt you guys are gonna want to do that. So I'm gonna actually keep my title. I could also go ahead and get rid of my grid lines if I wanted to. So I could do more of a schedule like this, but it, it's totally up to you guys what you want to do. I'm actually going to keep those grid lines and I'm actually going to keep my title. So I also can edit these, uh, these values up here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my schedule and for the plumbing fixture schedule, maybe I do want it to say that, but I want it all caps. So I can just click into this and let's just change this to plumbing fixture, plumbing fixture schedule. And I can also change things like type mark, although I kind of like the idea of using type mark, but again, I can just make it all caps. And for description, I could also change that. I could change that to fixture, and you guys get the idea. So I can change these to anything I'd like, and they will update on my on my schedule right here. So that's how you make changes to those things. Now it's still using the description um, field, but we can just change what the field is called. Now let's check out um, the formatting. So I'm going to click back into my schedule and schedules right here. So I'm going to go back to formatting and under formatting, we can do a couple different things. So one thing I like to do is under type mark, everything is aligned to the left. So we can change that to align to the center and that usually looks pretty good. So I'm going to click OK on that. And now you can see that the type mark got aligned to the center here. So it looks a little cleaner. So you can see my titles are actually center aligned too. And then the actual values down here are justified to the left. So these are the things you can kind of play around with to kind of get them to look like you want them to. You can also do some uh, filtering. So let's talk about that. So let's hit cancel. So for filtering, what I can do is if I only wanted to show like the sink fixtures, I don't know why you would want to do this, but for some reason, if I only wanted to show the sinks, I would use description because we changed that from description to fixture, but I'm going to go to description and anything that contains sink, I'm going to hit OK. And now my fixture schedule only shows things with sink in the name. Okay, so this is actually very useful. One thing I would recommend and one thing you're going to probably have to do is when you go into filter, maybe um, when you start to place all the fixtures that are in your model, you're going to have some drains. And so maybe that you don't want anything that has the word drain in it. So anything that contains or does not contain anything that does not contain drain. So for let's just pretend anything that had sink was actually a drain. So I'm going to say does not contain sink. Hit OK. And now you can see the only thing that's showing up is my lavatory because everything else contained sink. So instead of sink, 
in this example, you would want to put drain. So all my drains would just go away. So I'm going to undo that. But that is a, that is a handy thing that you guys are probably going to want to do because you usually want to divide up your uh, your plumbing fixture schedule with your drain schedule. So I'm actually going to just show you kind of that concept uh, using these. And I think it's a good review to show you guys how to create a new type of fixture. So I'm just going to go ahead and hold control and we're just going to create a new fixture right here. So I have it selected and I'm just going to go to edit type and we're going to go ahead and create a new type of fixture and this is going to be a drain just for um, explanation. So I'm going to duplicate this and we're going to call it drain one. Hit OK. And this is my drain one and we're going to utilize the type mark and we're going to call this drain one. Hit OK. And now you can see there is a new drain one for the, the type mark. And maybe I actually didn't want to do that. For the type mark, I probably want to make this a floor drain. So FD1. And then under description, it's going to be a floor drain. Hit OK. And now that's looking a little better. I have my type mark as FD-1. And my fixture is called floor drain. And I could fill in the manufacturer model and all that stuff. But really what I want to show you guys is how to actually use that. So let's go back to our plumbing fixture schedule. And like I said, let's use the filter and we're going to filter by the description and it's going to be does not contain drain. So anything that does contain drain is going to get dropped off this list. So I'm going to hit OK and my drain has been removed. Now, let's say I spent all this time creating this plumbing fixture schedule. Now I'm just going to maybe I want to create a drain schedule. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click on this and we're just going to duplicate this schedule. And since it's my drain schedule, I'm going to go ahead and name this drain schedule. And we're going to throw this uh, drain schedule on a view. So we'll just throw it right there. And Revit is nice enough to allow us to snap right, right there. And for this, I only want to show drains. So let's go ahead and edit this drain schedule. So we're in it right now. So let's go to filter. And instead of does not contain drain, I only want things that contain the word drain. We're going to hit OK. And now you can see I have just quickly created a drain schedule um, using this plumbing fixture schedule. So I really hope you guys are understanding this kind of concept and hopefully it speeds up um, the way you do things. Now one cool thing, and I will have this uh, all available at mepguide.com, I will have a template file for you guys, and I will include uh, this um, exercise with all these different names, and I will include this schedule. And on a video on my website at mepguide.com, I will have um, a, another video showing you guys how to insert this into another project so that way you can create your own template file with all of your custom fixtures with all of these um, values filled out and you'll be able to enter uh, you know drag and drop them into any project or just copy and paste them into any project so I'm going to show you guys some tips on how I would do that but I'm also going to show you guys how to add the connector sizes to this schedule so that you don't have to think about uh, what the connection sizes are they are exactly what they are in the model so uh, stay tuned for that that'll be on mepguy.com oh there is one more thing I want to show you guys so a lot of times on a plumbing fixture schedule we want to have some notes at the bottom so what I would recommend on the sheet all you have to do is go to annotate text and then just create a text box right here and I would just make this um, yeah fixture notes and I would maybe just start one two three and then this would be note one note two and vice versa and I would just create that at the bottom and you could use detail lines to make it look like it's part of the schedule but this is something that we constantly um, see in the MEP world is using some notes down here below for kind of general notes for all the plumbing fixtures you know to say you know you want a uh, thermostatic mixing valve on all your lavatories and vice versa all that kind of stuff so that's how you would do that and then the last thing I would recommend is uh, maybe selecting both these two when the, when you're done and just grouping them together and I'm just gonna name it group one for now but what that will do is now if I wanna you know kinda move this around they're together and I don't have to worry about them 
um, you know, being misaligned. So that's just like a little tip for you guys. And if I didn't need to edit this thing, I just double click into it. And then I can just go ahead and edit, edit these notes down here. So I can add a note number three. Uh, let's get rid of note four. And then I just click finish on here. And just like that, um, everything is lined up and, and nobody can mess with the, the alignment there. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, please let me know in the comments what kind of videos, uh, ideas you guys have for the future for me. And I will make sure to make them. Thanks and have a good weekend.